With Wooden Waves released, one of the most important things have to be raising your union levels as it is not just the only way for you to progress with the main story, but also more importantly, you can obtain valuable pool currency to get your hands on your favourite units much, much faster. And you only unlock the co-op function at level 22, so if you want to play with your friends, you have to up your union level. That is why in this video, I'm going to show you all of the tips I use to level up to union level 21 in the first day. Regardless, to start things off, off, I'm going to touch on two basic tips that will smoothen your gameplay experience with the first one being wall running. Now simply put, in Wooden Waves, if you are stuck holding onto the wall, just press the dash button and you will start wall running. Simple as that. Do note that this takes a whole bunch of stamina though, so be sure to aim for a platform you can regen your stamina and don't wall run for too long basically. The second basic tip has to be clearing enemies you find along the way to your main objective as it is going to go a long way towards getting you that little bit of unit AXP but also you will be able to gather basic echo sets and you can upgrade your data bank level in the process. What's more, the raw stats of the echoes alone will help you boost your DPS or boost your survivability so that everything can go faster. With those two basic tips out of the way, you are now ready for the next step of preparation which is to unlock all of the central towers as this will brighten up your day and your map, allowing you to explore with ease. So definitely do this as a main priority before you go on to the next step. With that said, the easiest way for you to obtain union level has to be the main story and it grants you extremely good EXP but it will usually get you out and require you to reach a certain level before allowing you to progress which is the entire focus of my video. How to get to the next checkpoint with this next thing I'm going to mention being in my opinion the most crucial one out of everything and that is to spend all of your wave plates on bosses that you're able to unlock at union level 10. So once you go past the first part of the story you should be at level 8 and you just do some random quest you're going to get to level 10 and you unlock bosses once you unlock them you can find these bosses on your maps by pressing the M hotkey to open the map and then track down their locations and hunt them down specifically each boss will grant you 500 union exp for free the first time you clear them totally without using any wave plates by the way and do not be afraid to go for them as they are not that difficult in all honesty as they are only level 35 at the start but if you do need help, just be sure to cook up some basic skewers, have them boost your attack for free, practically for free, right? For 15 minutes. And also you can purchase some of these revival potions from the pharmacy if you happen to die in the battle. It will help you a lot if you have these potions, pressing the hotkey that normally switches your unit in will trigger the option to revive them. Don't ask me how I know, it's certainly not from personal experience. Additionally, when hunting, do note that you should spend all of your wave plates to claim the rewards at the end of the fight. So there are two parts. First one being clearing the boss for the first time for the 500 EXP and the next part being spending your wave plates so that you are able to obtain additional EXP. But you should only do this for the bosses that drops the ascension materials you need for your units. I want to really really put emphasis on this because if you spend them nearly willy on any boss, you will not be able to level up your units to the next breakpoint and subsequently of course going to 40 uh, to 50, 50 to 60, 60 to 70, so on and forth, you will need a lot of this ascension materials. So only aim for your main DPS, like if you have Kaucharo for example, you can definitely just go and farm the Thundering Memphis and how I know that is because my Kaucharo will show me that I need that ascension material and then I will check on the map itself to see, hey, this boss drops that ascension material. Material. But if you are clueless, go on premium website, wikis like that will show you what essential materials are required and you can just aim for that boss and spend all of your stamina there, don't leave anything out. Consume all of your crystal solvents, those that give you 60 wave plates at a time. Do not be afraid to do that because you will need a lot of this ascension materials and farming the bosses is definitely the most efficient thing. And notably, if you're wondering how you can farm them repeatedly, their respawn time is 3 minutes. So just wait 3 minutes at the same spot and then they will respawn, you can farm them again, empty out all of your wave plates once you reach level 10. This is going to be massive you're going to boost your unit level so so much. Each time you spend 60, you're going to get 450. Compounded with the fact that there are 10 or 11 bosses on the map itself that gives you the first clear rewards, you're going to get a dozen of union levels. This is like the bulk of this union leveling strategy. A disclaimer here though is that depending on when you start the game, you might want to prioritize instead the weekly challenges first because they have a limit of 3 times per week. But the reason why I don't recommend doing this if you are quite far away from the weekly reset 
is because they do grant better rewards i do believe the further you progress so definitely try to save them as much as possible and don't complete them on the day one if possible now back to the point on bosses although i mentioned you can go and hunt down the bosses specifically using the map function to track them there is a single boss that you cannot unlock unless you clear the exploration quest and you should definitely do so and this boss is the monkey philia Belinga. okay what the hell is this name okay whatever this boss is i'm showing you on the screen right now this boss you have to unlock it with the exploration quest so definitely clear it the associated quest is the deem forest quest so make sure you do it get the experience as well it does give a lot of exp if i'm not wrong so definitely you have to do it another thing to note is this boss hell rider boss you unlock it relatively fast however you absolutely want to grab multiple copies and you want to get it as soon as possible it is because this is basically your mount for the game i know a lot of people know this already you probably got it because you are doing the quest and you got the hell rider mount but are you exploiting this hack which i am doing which is to equip multiple units with hell rider as the active echo so you can do the hell rider echo it has a 20 seconds cooldown if i'm not wrong so the first one goes you'll boost up you'll become like sonic but once it ends you'll go back to your normal speed that is when you swap in your second unit with this hell rider or even a third unit right you can continuously chain the hell rider and by the time you finish the third unit or the second unit it will be almost time for the first unit to have Hellrider again. So this is how you can explore the map so fast. I really speed run through everything just because of this hack. So very, very important, the Hellrider hack. And also, if you're unaware, you can just hold down the Q key to actually make it go into the mount. If you just tap it once, I believe it will uh, do the attack instead. So you do not want that. You want to hold it down to summon this mount. Moving on, another thing that will help you a lot is of course to aim for quests that gives you a massive amount of EXP. An early example being the Ling Yang quest. I believe you get 1,500 or 2,000 EXP from that. And also you can clear, like I've mentioned, the exploration quest that will give you 1k uh, also at times, which is basically like half a level already. So it will definitely help a lot. And generally, this quests are very very straightforward so you just follow the the pointer go to the next place however if you are stuck because they ask you to wait for a certain timing what you can do is to boot up the in-game clock system you can change the clock to suit the timing so that you can progress with the quest instantly there's no waiting involved uh, guys don't be like a silly goose down there waiting for the time to pass slowly there's no such thing you just change it instantly able to proceed immediately and the next thing that involves no waiting is basically the guidebook function which as the name suggests guides you to do whatever stuff you are meant to do just clear it up when you have the opportunity to do so it gives 100 exp per task that you complete and then additionally when you complete everything you will get more rewards you'll get some extracts as well so this one i leave it for last because it's not as important i know you guys already know how to do it so i'm not going to touch on it too much do let me know in the comment section below if my tips help you and if you're interested in finding out about some other day one mistakes definitely check out this video this is cocky gachas signing off